Hello viewers, it's Super GT here with Forza 6 gameplay once again. Now, I love drifting around and smashing stuff up on Forza Horizon 3. But I love doing it on Forza 6 as well. As we come into the first corner at Yas Marina, it's more like a bowling alley than it is a race circuit. Pretty much everyone is a skittle right about now. I'm through safely in 11th in my Honda NSX. This is not going to be a full gameplay of this race and that guy gets whacked off the circuit we're just gonna go through a couple of starts here because it took me a couple of starts to get a good race and now it appears as though most people here want to re resort to the 180 spin into race start technique and it seems to have worked for that mono up in the lead as we come down into the first corner i'm in the alfa romeo in a class i'm gonna get the brakes fairly nicely but the guy behind me isn't rko out of nowhere Thankfully, it didn't really affect me too much, so I carry on, and that race was pretty rubbish in the end. We go to Brands Hatch in the Honda NSX. I forget how to drive, go into the wall, come back on right. Here we are in 16th out of 17. Let's see where we can get to after a couple of corners. So up the inside of an RX-7 who's just off the track. This mono is going to come back on, come across, and I'm going to be forced onto the grass as we come up into the hairpin at the top of the hill people wide everywhere and I've got the inside of about 80 cars up into 8th and uh, that was a good start but this is the main race we are going to see today this is a top quality race from start to finish so off the line we go I'm in the Cadillac CTSV it's one of my favorite cars in A-Class uh, for those of you who have watched lots of my 4 6 videos you've seen me use this thing many times and I almost get collected into the first turn I just saw that guy off the go off the bottom of my screen thankfully he did not collect me going into turn two on the inside of the Porsche 718 as we go around turn two BSC mono coming back on wasn't sure which way to go and I just managed to get the right decision there going to the left as he went for a full 90 degree rejoin you know as you do so moving on to around two thirds of the way into lap number one I just forget that I have to turn around that corner. I go wide. The Porsche is going to come back around my outside. He's going to regain second. We've got a Chevy Camaro up in the lead. Now, we, we all know that those cars are absolutely rapid. Especially on this kind of track. That car has got so much power. Very difficult car to beat. Especially in, uh, in A-Class when it's tuned up properly. So, we've got the alternative, uh, alternative version here. So we're going to go left, braking just on the bridge. That is my marker normally for that corner. Uh, I can see there it's a little bit too late. So on the next lap, I will be remembering that. Braking a little bit just before that bridge as you enter that little complex there. So third place, Porsche 718 has driven away slightly. He has actually caught up with the Chevy Camaro. And just behind we've got a gap of about 300 feet. So not having to worry about him. As we break into this corner, well I might have to worry about him if he comes flying out of nowhere. Thankfully he doesn't that time. And I'm through there okay. So we've got just over two laps left to try and make some inroads into the Porsche 718 ahead. Someone has quit the race, no doubt getting smashed about back there. So into the final turn, going for a late apex. Don't quite hit the apex though, running wide on the exit. As we go up the hill, now the CTSV is good on power. So it's a good all round car, really. It's good. It handles well, has decent brakes, and it has a good acceleration top speed. And you're going to see the top speed now. As we come down the second straight, I'm going to catch up with the 718. Look towards the inside. Get on the brakes. And I'm not quite there. Yes, I am. I'm just going to nudge him. As we come into the next turn, I'm just going to look for the inside. Just put him off slightly. But then he is going to regain that position. Now, around this section of the track, I'm expecting the handling of the 718 to excel here so he will slightly drive away from me uh, so I'm just gonna try and hang on the best I can and then we have to wait for the last sector in the first sector where the straights are that's gonna real that's where I can reel in uh, this 718 now this layout doesn't actually help this car so we have the uh, the chicane which tends not to help the speed orientated car so normally you have to tone down the speed on your cars just for this section here Get on the brakes earlier than I did previous on the previous lap. And we are into the corner just fine. So that is something you have to do if you want to have good braking points. Make a marker. So for my uh, my marker for that corner is the bridge. Uh, so if you brake on the first lap and it's too late, 
then obviously just adjust a little bit before the bridge and you see that time it worked out perfectly I do that for most corners on that corner breaking between the four and the five on the left hand side there's little markers there's little numbers on the wall breaking between the four and five so 450 feet I think is what the measurement is there on this one just before that uh, the banner just above you and actually that's a little bit late so you're going for a late apex though you can go for a late apex gives you more speed up the straight now we can see what this car can do compared to the 718 he's about 270 feet ahead as we come up the straight towards the start of lap number three so one lap left to try and overcome this Porsche 718 and you can see here reeling him in at a very fast rate of knots coming to the first turn down to the third gear don't quite get the apex but carry the speed through nevertheless and then into the second turn once again we're just trying to keep the momentum through the corner to give us the best run onto the straight a little bit late into the corner late apex and they're coming out nicely towards the outside as we come down this next straight now we're going to have to look behind here because someone is in a mercury cougar which is an absolute monster in a straight line and he's just reeled in about 400 feet to within about 30 and as you can see there he's actually right on us so this has turned from a two horse race into a three horse race and I've gone a little bit deep as I try to rejoin he's just going to make contact me, uh, with me there but no problems at all the Mercury Cougar looking up the inside give him a car whip on the inside there for him but just keep the momentum around the outside move across so that he can't overtake me through the right hand kink not, mu uh, not much he can do there uh, in that Mercury Cougar all of his PI is in straight line speed so his handling is not going to be top notch through there so I've got a bit of a breathing space into the left hander the Porsche was 718 a little bit wide on the exit of the dog leg left into the carousel this is where his car should excel and drive away from me I'm just going to try and hang on the best I can because I still have a chance in this race in fact this race really could go either way so we have it's quite a strange paradox we're here we have the best handling car at the front and then the best speed car at the back and then my car in the middle which is more of an all-rounder so this really could go either way so as we enter the straight I'm going to start reeling in the Porsche but then again the guy in the Cougar is going to start reeling in me as well so it's going to make for a very interesting finale to the race I'm around the, around the outside into the last couple of corners the 718 just going to keep the position on the inside and then the Cougar is just lining up behind me here just going to try and keep position now I'm wary of trying to attack and defend at the same time which can be, uh, can be a very difficult situation to be in so last corner is going to make for a very interesting ending to so come around the last turn. The Porsche is going to move to the right, then back to the left. The Cougar is just going to overtake me on my left hand side there, but he's blocked off by the Porsche. And as we cross the line, he's just going to get a nudge from the Cougar. And that was a really close ending. Nine thousandths of a second uh, between, the, between myself and the Porsche across the line there. And barely a tenth between myself and the Cougar. So that was an extremely close finish which could have gone one of three ways. It really could have gone one of three ways. The Cougar did the right thing though. He did, he did not have the space to move across past the Porsche uh, without risking crashing into me. So he did the right thing by not trying to overtake there. So unfortunately for him I think he, he, he did have the speed to win that one. As you can see there as he drives off. He did have the speed to get past. Uh, fortunately I was just about able to win that one. And he just nudged him across the line. And that made it really close. Nine thousandths of a second. So a really good race there. And it was a really enjoyable, re uh, respectable racing between the three of us. Well done to the Chevy Camaro as well. Who ran away with the victory in that race. So that is going to bring a close to this video guys. I hope you have enjoyed this one. A bit of Forza 6 coverage for you. I know that uh, most of you have subscribed to me for the Forza 6 content. But I have to try to get out there with the other games. I do like Forza Horizon 3. Uh, so I want to play that as well and make videos on it. I will not neglect my Forza 6 fan base though. So I will always be making videos on the Motorsport series as well. So if you did like this video guys, please hit that like button. And subscribe if you'd like to see more like this. Let me know your thoughts on the race. And I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.